Okay, so let's see if you know enough geometry to solve this very interesting geometry problem. Okay, so what do we have here? Well, we have a circle, and then, of course, we have a triangle inside this circle. But this part of the triangle is the diameter of the circle. In other words, it is the width of the circle. It's going to the center right here. Now, this triangle, this side of the triangle is 12, and this side right here is 7. And the question is, we want to know the radius of the circle. Okay, so what is the radius of this uh, circle given this information? Well, we have a multiple choice question here, and let's take a look at our answers. So A is 4.12, B is 4.73, C is 6.94, and D is 8.61. Now, feel free to use a calculator, but if you could figure this out, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. I'll show you the correct answer in just one second. Then, of course, I'm going to walk through exactly how to solve this problem step by step. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And if you need help learning math, Check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy this content, make sure to like and subscribe as that definitely helps me out. All right, so again, we're trying to find the radius. And kind of the radius, I'll just tell you, is this distance right here. Okay, it goes from the center out to the edge. So that's what we're looking for. But this entire length right here is the diameter of this circle. And again, we have this triangle. This side is 12. This side is 7. So what is the radius? Well, let's go ahead and take a look at the right answer. The correct answer is C, which is approximately 6.94. All right, so that is the correct answer. And if you got that right, well, you definitely get a happy face and an A+. Matter of fact, if you were in my geometry course, I would just say take the rest of the year off. I don't know how you know all this math. You're probably watching that guy on YouTube. All right, so great job. But uh, here, I think uh, there's a lot of people that can um, solve this problem, but they're probably stuck on one part of the problem. Or they're kind of looking at it and they're saying, all right, there's something about this problem that I it looks, it appears to be, um, you know, something. Okay, and I'll kind of leave that, you know, really general here in a second. This appears to be, matter of fact, I'll just tell you right now, some of you might be saying, hey, Mr. YouTube Math Man, this looks like a right triangle, but, uh, you know, I'm not quite sure it is. Well, if that is what you were kind of looking at and you were saying, boy, if this was a right triangle, I could figure this out, but I'm just not sure I can prove or establish that did, that uh, that is a right triangle. Well, you were on, you were definitely on the right track and that is going to be the strategy here. I'm going to show you why this is a right triangle. Now, if this is a right triangle, which it is, and we're looking for the radius, which is this part right here, or that distance, well, what we can do here is find the hypotenuse of this right triangle because we have the two sides out of the three sides in a right triangle, and we can use what? Well, you might be thinking the Pythagorean theorem, a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. So this, coupled with uh, this being a right triangle, well, we can figure out the radius, but why is this a right triangle? Well, I'll show you that in just one second, and of course, I'll finish up the rest of the math that uh, we need to do to get the right answer. But uh, for those of you that still have to take math exams, and let's suppose you came across a problem like this, and you'd be like, hey, uh, I have no idea what to do, Mr. YouTube Math Man. Uh, well, listen, one thing you don't want to do is ever, ever leave a multiple choice question blank. Matter of fact, never leave any math a question blank with very few exceptions. Uh, for those of you that may have to take like the SAT or ACT exam, you may get a slight, well, not may, you'll definitely get a uh, some sort of penalty usually that's like a quarter point or something. I, I can't remember off the top of my head, but you'll get some sort of uh, negative uh, point value for wrong answers, okay? But for the vast majority of situations, always at least take a guess, okay? That's a long-winded way of saying, hey, you know, just take a guess. So, you know, you might be looking at this, well, this is 12, this is 7. Well, this, you know, appears to be kind of like a right triangle. And if this is a right triangle, well, this has to be the longest side. So, you know, it'd have to be longer than 12. 
But remember, we're looking for the radius, okay? So the radius is what? That's half the diameter, okay? So if I kind of doubled this, let's just call this, four, uh, instead of 4.1, let's just kind of think of this as 4. If I double that, that's 8. So that would mean that the diameter is 8 if the radius is 4. Well, that's not going to make sense because if this looks like a right triangle, this should be greater, okay? So in other words, these two answers would be better guesses. Okay, so again, for those of you that are professionals in guessing, which I was way back in the good old days, I used to remember I could complete a math test in like five minutes. I was so good because I would be like, all right, my lucky letter today is B, and I would just circle everything B. Of course, I went out past the exam, but anyways, let's get back to the problem. And remember, the key here is to uh, figure out uh, what this angle is. And this is a right angle, which of course is going to make solving this problem very easy. But why is it a right triangle? Well, let's go ahead and get into that right now. Okay, so let's take a look at the problem. I'm going to give you a little bit more detail here. Let's put some points on um, uh, the vertices of this triangle. So this is the diameter. So anytime you see a, like a circle figure and you see a dot in the center, well, that indicates the center, okay? So that is the center of the circle. And you can see a line going through from edge to edge. That's called technically a chord. So the longest chord in a circle is what we call the diameter, okay? So if you see a line and it's not explained, that notation is indicating that, yes, indeed, that is the diameter. And remember, we're looking for the radius. Okay, so... The key here is figuring out this angle. So what is this angle? Well, there's a few observations here that we want to consider, okay? And that is uh, here, okay, uh, the diameter is basically chopping this circle in two. So in other words, this is like a semicircle, and this is like another semicircle, right? So two semicircles, we have a complete circle. So a diameter of a circle will obviously create two semicircles, and that's going to be important, okay? You're going to see why in just one second, because really what we're talking about here is something called inscribed angles. Let's go back to this figure here and see why we are dealing with an inscribed angle. So let's just forget about the diameter here for a second and just focus in on this part right here, okay? The edges of the um, triangle. So let me just draw this out this way. So these two sides, the 12 and the 7, really could look like this, okay? So we have like 12 here and 7 here, okay? So here's 12 and here's 7. But let's just look at this simple figure. So what we have is an inscribed angle angle, right? This is an inscribed angle inside of a circle. And uh, we can uh, figure a few things out about inscribed angles if we know a simple relationship. So let's go ahead and take a look at that relationship and you can see it right here. So an inscribed angle in a circle is the following. Okay, so what's the relationship? You might be saying, hey, Mr. YouTube Math Man, it looks like the arc formed by this triangle, the angle is one half the arc, arc formed by the triangle. All right, so <laughs> hopefully I didn't mess that up too bad, but you can just kind of see it better than I can even say it, right? So we have an inscribed angle. Now, by the way, this angle is inscribed, meaning the uh, vertex is on the edge of the circle. Okay, and it's kind of coming out like this and forming an arc. Well, the angle is half of the arc, okay? Or the arc is double the angle. This is absolutely a formula or relationship that you need to know in geometry, but it's pretty straightforward, okay? Now, we're going to use this fact here to figure out this angle. So I kind of gave you a few uh, clues here, but let's just go ahead and formalize this uh, for, um, uh, formula right now. Okay, so here, if I have uh, angle, inscribed angle A, B, C, all right, so this is point A, this is point B, and this is point C. So the measure of angle ABC, which is this angle right here, is equal to one half the measure, that little M means measure, uh, one half the measure of arc AC. So from A to C, uh, what we're talking about is arc. Okay, so in other words, we're talking about the degree measure from here to here. Remember, a complete rotation, one lap around the circle is going to be 360 degrees. Okay, so hopefully this makes sense, but this would be the formula that you would need to know if you were taking some sort of geometry course. But it looks pretty fancy, right? I mean, we're going to kind of take a look at this, but really it means something very simple, right? Just half of the arc is what the inscribed angle is going to be equal to. 
Okay, so now let's go back to our problem. And now let's think about this, right? So we have an inscribed angle. Now you might you may not be thinking about it in, in those terms, and that's why you have to be very careful when you study a figure in geometry because some of this other information might kind of um, you know confuse you. But here, these two parts of the triangle do form a arc from here to here. Okay. Now because this is the diameter. This is a semicircle. So how many degrees is it from here to here? Again, we have a semicircle. And if you said, hey, Mr. YouTube Math Man, I think that's 180 degrees. Well, you would be absolutely right. Okay, so a semicircle is halfway around a circle or 180 degrees. So if we look at this, we have our inscribed angle like so. Here's the diameter, but our arc is from here to here which is what, 180 degrees. So if this is the arc, what is this angle? Well, it's half, okay? We just looked at the formula, so that makes uh, uh, this angle one half of 180 degrees, which of course is 90 degrees, which is a right triangle, and we are very happy about that because, yay, we get to use the Pythagorean theorem to solve the problem. Okay, so let's go ahead and take the next step, which of course is have you quickly subscribe to my YouTube channel. Now, there's two words that I have, hopefully you have them in your vocabulary, and the first is help, okay? I don't mind asking for help because I have a goal, and I need your help to continue to reach as many people as possible on YouTube, okay? I really wanna help as many people as I can. That is my goal, okay? But like any good goal, you typically are going to need help, okay? And the best way you can help me reach my goal is to simply hit that subscribe button and that notification bell so you can get my latest videos. Now, the reason why I wanna uh, reach as many people as possible, because it's just been my experience through decades of uh, teaching mathematics, and I've just seen it time and time again, is that a lot of people really get down on themselves when it comes to math and they're like, I'm not smart enough, I don't like math, I'm not, you know, and I'm just like, boy, that's, it's just definitely not the case, okay? Most people could do far, far better in math, but they just need encouragement, right? They need someone to uh, really help them, you know, get on the right track, and so that's my passion, that's why I'm on YouTube, so that is my goal. Now, if you have a goal of uh, learning math, you know, if you're some sort of, uh, you know, if you're taking some sort of math class and you're like, yes, uh, Mr. YouTube Math Man, my goal is to pass my class with a C minus. Well, you need to increase that goal, have big goals, and I can help you get there. Okay, now if you like my YouTube videos, well, that is fantastic. But check out my full main math courses. You can find links to those in the description uh, of this video. That's my best math instruction. And the stuff that we're talking about in this video, you will find in my full geometry course. All right, so let's go back and finish up this problem because there's not much to do. Yes, we do have some uh, number crunching to do, but if you understand the Pythagorean theorem, well, then we're going to be home free. Okay, so remember the problem is we want to determine the radius of the circle. Well, before we get uh, to the radius, let's just figure out the hypotenuse of this right triangle, which of course is the, di uh, the diameter, and one half of the diameter is going to be the radius. So we need to solve for x, which is the, di uh, the diameter. So we have to uh, break out the Pythagorean theorem. Now remember, uh, a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. Let me just kind of show you this real quick. So here is our right triangle. The longest side of uh, a right triangle is c, which is called the hypotenuse. And it's always gonna be opposite of that 90 degree angle, so this is c. So don't confuse this with a or b. These two sides were here, seven and 12. Uh, is uh, one could be seven, I'm sorry, uh, one could be A, one could be B, it doesn't make a difference, but C is always the hypotenuse. All right, so let's go ahead and just plug in the numbers. So A squared plus B squared is going to be what? Well, it's gonna be, uh, tw oh, let me do this uh, consistently here, 12 squared, 12 squared, <laughs> 12 plus, uh, 12 squared plus seven squared is equal to C squared, but here we have the variable X, we'll just have it as X squared. All right, so here, is the equation that we need to solve. So let's go ahead and do that number crunching right now. Okay, so 12 squared is 12 times 12, which of course is 144. Seven squared, seven times seven, which is 49. 144 plus 49 is 193, and that's gonna be equal to x squared. So now I have a lovely basic quadratic equation. So all I have to do is take uh, the square root of both sides. So I'm gonna take the square root of 193, the square root of x squared, 
the square root of x squared is x. So our answer, x, is going to be the square root of 193, which is approximately 13.89. So I really should have put this um, as an option in the multiple choice uh, uh, part of this problem because a lot of you may have selected this, right? You did all this great work. You're super excited. And you're like, oh, here's the answer. And uh, no, that's wrong. That's the diameter. Remember, the question is, what is the radius? Well, the radius is one half of the diameter. So we're just going to take this number divided by two, and we're going to get approximately 6.94. All right. So hopefully you enjoyed this little problem. And again, the key here, you know, I think for most people uh, was determining that this, in fact, was a uh, right angle. Okay. Now, let me give you a little bit of a tip here. If you, uh, let's say you are taking a math exam and you just can't uh, come to the absolute conclusion that you are dealing with a right triangle, sometimes it's not uh, a bad strategy, okay? If you have to do this, you know, I think it's, um, you know, a good thing is you're, you're like, well, I got to finish this question. I only have a couple minutes to try to solve it. So I'm just going to assume here for a second that it is a right triangle and then do the math. And if you find the right answer, well, you're probably uh, right. That's going to be far better than just, you know, doing some random guessing. And, of course, we could talk about the other things as well in terms of, like, well, if this does look like a right triangle, these two answers definitely don't make sense, being that this is the diameter, right? This has to be greater than 12. You know, if this is, again, the we're talking about the radius, right? So what's the radius? So the radius has to be greater than 6, okay, because 6 and 6 is 12. So this can't be... Um, uh, 12, right? This can't be 12 and this can't be 12. It has to be greater than 12 for another reason called the triangle inequality. All right, I have to stop myself here because I can just ramble on and on because I love teaching math that much. But hopefully you got something out of this video. And if that's the case, don't forget to like and subscribe. And with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your math adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.